Today in the news, NVIDIA opens up a little bit, a DIY 2080 Ti Super, and some Microsoft. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. G-Sync was introduced back in 2015. It was, for the most part, a hardware module added to monitors to sync refresh rates to frame rates. That technology would only work with NVIDIA GPUs, and when monitors with that tech started to come out, they had a pretty hefty premium because of that module. In the same year, AMD introduced FreeSync, which did pretty much the same thing, except it was available as a part of the Adaptive Sync standard. NVIDIA pretty much shunned AMD by not letting their GPUs support FreeSync. Fast forward to January of this year and Nvidia opened up a little by letting their GPUs mingle with the FreeSync crowd. That way you can use a cheaper FreeSync monitor with Nvidia GPUs. At this point you can use Nvidia GPUs with G-Sync or FreeSync monitors but AMD GPUs only have the option to use FreeSync. And that brings us to today. A recent TFT Central report revealed that Nvidia is finally going to open up their G-Sync technology to AMD GPUs. It took them long enough, but at least it's an F for effort. With that, Nvidia is also introducing a new G-Sync firmware that will add variable refresh rates over HDMI, something that Adaptive Sync and FreeSync 2.0 was already doing. Only issue is that the firmware will only work for newer and future G-Sync modules. So yeah, if you have a G-Sync display and you want an AMD GPU, you can do it now. And if you're looking for a variable refresh rate monitor, just buy an Adaptive Sync one. It's going to save you some cash. Moving on, we've got a pretty interesting YouTube story. A trio of guys over at the Tech Lab YouTube channel did something I've always wanted to try. They made their own RTX 2080 Ti Super, sort of. So the 2080 Ti has 11 gigabytes of memory clocked at 1750 megahertz. With overclocking, you can usually bring that up to 2000 megahertz, but going over that is pretty hard. What Tech Lab did was sacrifice two 2080 Supers. They took the memory chips off that since the refresh of the 2080 includes faster stock memory and soldered those chips on the 2080 Ti. The result, they were able to overclock the memory up to 2250 megahertz. Now this isn't a huge overclock and they did have to sacrifice two 2080 supers, but it's still something pretty awesome to test out. Next on the list, they should try and find some two gigabyte GDDR6 memory modules and double the memory on a single card. That would be fun. Uh, the link to the video is down below. Moving on to some Intel news, and for the first time in a while, it's good news. My favorite SSD is getting an upgrade. In case you didn't know, the NVMe SSD that I recommend the most is the Intel 660p. It's, in my opinion, the perfect balance between speed, size, and price. Well, Intel has just announced the 665p. First thing to note, no more 512GB models. It will only be available in 1 and 2TB capacities, which honestly is fine for me since the price was so low. In terms of upgrade, the speeds will be a little bit better at 2 gigabytes per second and endurance which was one of the downsides of uh, QLC NAND has been improved. This SSD will be available in next year. Now Black Friday is coming up so if you were looking for some cheap NVMe storage the 660p is still the way to go in my opinion. All right, little update here. We're probably going to do a Black Friday live stream with Hardware Canucks, like we did last year, except probably on their channel, but it's not 100% sure. So stay tuned for that. It's probably gonna be in the morning Eastern time. And uh, let me know down below what you would like to see us cover. Is it storage deals, case deals, laptops, or even a small trip to the uh, Ikea store like we did last year? All right, let's move on to some Microsoft news. So VR has been pretty successful for Xbox's competition, PlayStation. They sold well over 4 million headsets and will probably sell more during the holidays. Plus the PS5 will also support PSVR, so it would make sense for Xbox to join in on their next gen, right? I mean, they even have filed a patent for room scale VR about a month back, but no. In a recent interview with uh, Stiviver, Phil Spencer confirmed that VR just isn't important for Microsoft right now. He precisely that I have some issues with VR. It's isolating and I think of games as a communal kind of together experience. We're responding to what our customers are asking for and nobody's asking for VR. Is he wrong? No. But I would say that if I was gonna buy a next-gen console, I personally would go with the one that supports VR since I always play alone, I prefer single-player games, and VR can honestly be very communal online. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. 
Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, once again, it's always down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. So subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Tooth update. It's still broken. I think I bit my tongue like seven times during this uh, filming. <laughs>